Comrades and friends, um, welcome to yet another meeting of the Stalin Society. As you all know, it's the 200th anniversary this year of Darwin's birth and 150th anniversary of the publication of his epoch making um, work. Um, Theory of evolution. The origin of species. Origin of species. Um, as BLN a long while ago said, that if geometrical theorems had, oh. had bearings on class interests, they would be very hotly disputed. Well, Darwin's work is in an area which has bearings on class interests. And in order to emphasize the significance and importance of Darwin's work to the struggle of the proletariat for its emancipation and its implication in the world of science, we have um, the fortune to have a natural scientist among us, that's Godfrey Kramer, and he's going to tell you all about Darwin and um, the deep work, I shall say. Well, not quite all, but I'll do the best I can. Um, yeah, Charles Darwin was born 200 years ago on the 12th of February in 1809, and, um, and also, as the parlour said, 50 years later in 1859. He published um, his most far-reaching work, and that was on the origin of species by the process of natural selection. And incidentally, today happens to be actually the date of his death as well. The, 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 um, yeah, the 19th of April. I've forgotten what year, but... Um, thank you. Well, this anniversary has actually produced quite a lot of recognition. Um, quite a lot of um, stuff has been appearing in, on television, in the press, all over the web, and quite a lot of controversy and polemic. <coughs> Much more than would be expected in the case of a, of, of a significant scientist. And the, the reason is that the theory of evolution, and I'm going to say a bit more about that and change the word theory later, um, presents not only the long understood and expected threat to religion, but much more, it actually presents a threat to imperialism. Religion itself is, is quite adaptable. Um, it was able to accommodate the idea of slavery, it accommodated feudalism, it's uh, accommodated capitalism, and in fact many branches of Christianity, for example, have managed to reconcile, at least to their own satisfaction, the idea with the idea of evolution and reconcile that with the idea of a supernatural creator. And, 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 and be, there are quite a lot of, um, of practicing scientists, biologists who believe firmly in evolution and at the same time believe firmly in God. So this, this reconciliation can take place. Um, but there are many, even today, who still take up the cudgels against evolution and it becomes clear that this isn't just some religious um, theo theological difficulty. The difficulty is, for them, that the threat is to imperialism and they're part of the prolonged attack which imperialism has launched against the idea of evolution and certainly against Darwin, its most um, notable propagator. Because it's not so much that there's an aesthetical antagonism to the suggestion that humans have ape-like ancestors, or let alone fish ancestors. The problem is that the understanding of the world in which we live is a world where there is development, in which organisms at one time dominant are superseded by new forms, which in their turn become dominant, is very, very dangerous to a social system which claims to be here to stay and claims to be everlasting, i.e. the system of capitalism, the system of monopoly capitalism, <coughs> imperialism. Now, no thoroughgoing science can be really effective if it's not based on dialectical materialism. <laughs> and many modern scientists who are idealists in their private lives, who are idealists in their social lives, when they go to work, they become materialists. You know, it's like the Mark Twain thing. They speak prose without knowing it. Um, they wouldn't claim to be dialectical materialists, but if they're going to be thoroughgoing in their scientific work, 
then that is what they have to practice. Indeed, the development of capitalism and its continued existence does depend on thoroughgoing science. So it has a problem. It needs the dialectical materialism of thoroughgoing science, and yet it's something which is not um, easily compatible with its desire to remain here forever. Isaac Newton, Robert Boyle, of the, who, who, who investigated gases, Alexander Fleming, even Louis Pasteur, who hit on the head the whole idea of spontaneous creation by some um, very far-reaching experiments which showed that even bacteria are not spontaneously created in piles of rubbish or whatever. But Louis Pasteur actually showed quite conclusively that all living organisms require orga organic ancestors. All organisms are beget by organisms. They're, 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 they're not spontaneously created. Indeed, if the speed of light and relativity were to affect imperialism, to paraphrase what Apollo said at the beginning, Albert Einstein would be at the receiving end of a whole lot of vilification um, and would get um, very, much the, very much the treatment that, that Darwin has been getting in this year. And, uh, and, and much, much less of it is celebration and very much of it is, is undermining. There's no indication at all that Darwin himself set out to promote the dialectical method. But he did approach the world from a materialist standpoint and in trying to explain what he saw of the real world he took the bold step that many of his contemporaries failed to take and others were taking only hesitantly. That is, he took the step of looking at what he observed in its context, in relation to its, the surroundings, and in doing that he recognised and then began to look at it in the process of development, in the process of change. Up to, up to Darwin's time, biology had been mainly a, a descriptive science. Um, biologists were engaged in studying the anatomy or the morphology, the body structure of animals and plants. They were beginning to look inside them to see how, what they looked like inside. But very, partic but very particularly, um, they were looking at their, their structure and their appearance. And collections were beginning to be established, um, mainly of preserved animals and plants. Museums were coming into um, quite, an, quite, quite, to become quite important. They were concerned with the range of current living organisms and being able to identify them. So they were, there were in various places held what are called the standard, standard types. It is true that there were new biological studies that were growing. Um, the study of the development of organisms and particularly their, develop, their embryological development, development from the, from the egg, whether in an egg or whether um, actually in the, in the body of a mother, that the study of that development um, was beginning to take place and the study of the functioning of organisms called physiology, not just how they look at what they look like, but how they work, was also beginning to get underway. But they were um, fairly new sciences and were beginning to develop. The study of organisms in the totality of their surroundings, which has become christened as or known as ecology from the, from the Greek word oikos, meaning a house or a home, the study of organisms in the total relation to their surroundings had not yet really begun at that time at all. What had happened was that geology was developing, the study of rocks, and the study of rock formations and how rocks were formed that covered the surface of the earth was beginning to get underway and associated with that the study of paleontology. Um, of the fossil remains of um, animals and plants